and the problem goes on. For example, now they have <coughs> the situation in the market of job, job, getting a job. About the judges, you see, there is no problem of getting job. Nowadays, there is a big demand for judges. Last what, 15 days, I have been trying for judges. Yes, it's a big demand. Coming to the problems, the other problem facing me is my bald head. At 60 years of age, you can always expect. When you say 20 years back, I had a thick hair like our Toastmaster or Shyokumar. One day I went there myself to the barber. I asked him, I had to cut my hair. And Nofal was just sitting next to that. He was also having the same cutting. And then he took out to the barbershop fellow. He took about 30 minutes to cut his hair. For me, it's only two minutes. I asked him, why do you charge so much for this power? I asked why so much 50 dirham for this cutting my hair. He said, for you to find a hair, I am finding it more difficult. <laughs> so that's why I am charging more. And uh, to this solution, I asked one of my friends, what to do? He said, there is a one spa specialist is there in, in UAE. Why don't you go and uh, check with him? Maybe you can become, what age you want? Maybe you want to be here for 20 years or 30 years or 40 years. I said, maybe 40 to 50 will be okay for my age to look. At this age, not fully full of hair, maybe slightly. Then I went to the doctor, <coughs> and I went there, the receptionist was there, he said, Sir, we need 10 days for to take appointment. Why 10 days? No, sir, we have so many people are waiting for this and you know, fixing the hair. I went, okay, I'll come out at 10 days. Doctor, I met, I met the doctor, he said, Yes, I said, Sandy, the situation, he told me, show me some photographs. Then he said, Which one you want? Okay, any age is okay for me. Then finally he said that for you certain conditions are you have to, you cannot oil for next one month. For me it is impossible. I cannot live without putting oil every day in my head, number one. Number two, he said that you have to wait for, to take bath, you have to wait for about two months. That's also impossible. I said, I cannot do it, I have to take bath every day. Not only when I told that you are putting the oil is that anybody can even recognize me about him one kilometer distance. Even sun, you know, sun grays with our rays. Daytime is very, very, very easy to for five people to find me. Yeah, he is Ramraj. He is coming because of my head. It shines like anything. <laughs> you know. Again, nighttime also again is the grace of moon. People still <coughs> recognize. Only advantage is the height. But if the Ghostbusters Rajesh is there, it is still easier for them to anybody to recognize. Again, then I said it's not possible for me to without taking bath, without oil, without putting oil is impossible. Then what is the next solution? I went to one of my friend. He said. Yes, there is another way of doing it. There is one doctor in India. You have to go to him. He said, I have to take appointment again. So I took the appointment. Doctor said, no, 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 your appointment is not important. I have to take the appointment of a cow. Have you heard about it? Yes, there are treatment like this. Like cow licking on your head. This is real doctor's advice. Cow licking on your head, you have to go there and sit there and melt like this. How will come and just brush your head like this? Oh and he will put some cream and all. Afterwards, this the, the licking of the hair by by the cow with this stem, tongue. You know, it, it, the follicles of your hair will get excited. Okay, then that way, after due course of time, it takes about six months time. Then I ask my boss, can I go every six months once to India to do this? It takes about three days for me to do this exercise. Uh, do you want to fix your hair or you want a job? Whichever you want. I said, <coughs> because obviously we are all uh, here for having, doing the job. Then it's impossible. Then finally I had this treatment for some time. Then he said, okay. There are even different kind of persons in the world, type of person in the sense. There are persons who is, example, a person who is say sorry for any mistake he did. He do it. Then in that case, he is, he is supposed to be a very honest person. A person who makes, still say sorry for some mistake he do. Then in that case, he is called, he is called, he is called what? He is called a gentleman. A person who says sorry all the time when he is right. Can you guess who is the kind of person? Exactly. You know, see, he has got the experience. <laughs> Another example is I went to a doctor. He wanted to check my BMI. The doctor told me, I am having BMI 36. Then I asked him, what is this BMI? He said, it is relation is the ratio between height and weight. My weight is not proportional to the height. Doctor said, you have to reduce your weight to another 
two months time you have to reduce your weight by another 10 kg. Doctor, can you advise me differently? Why can't I increase my height? So another six, if I have six feet height, then by BMI will be okay. Doctors are not really helping us in fact. They say, no, no, they, they stick to only the weight, not to the height. I have not gained my height for the last 20 years. How can I gain within, within 20, 20 minutes time or even two months time? So life goes with problems. But you know this one of the greatest, richest man in the world, the Amazon CEO, what he says that he is fully bald head. He is not a bald head at all. He is not worried at all. So there is no cure for baldness. Then why do you worry? Okay. Our third contestant, Postmaster Tiwa Anjani. <laughs> Postmaster Tiwa Anjani, better be a liar. Better be a liar, Postmaster Tiwa Anjani. What the best? Can you all imagine? You are sitting in front of the Convention Center 2019. International Toastmasters Convention Center, and you are eagerly waiting for the final announcement. And the surgery is accepted. And here comes the announcement. The world champion of 2019 public speaking is Toastmaster P.O. Anthony. <laughs> Mr. Vincent said, if you aim, aim at moon. At least you will land in a star. This was my simple aim when I joined eight years back in Toastmaster to be a world champion in few years' time. But years passed. I never missed one single meeting. I did, I did not even become a club champion. I went to my mentor recently. Hello, Mr. Pinder. You taught me many things. You promised me that you will make me this and that, club champion, area champion, district champion, at the end, world champion. Where am I now? He said, we have, listen, we have a solution. Listen to this world champion speech and follow their paths. Listen them carefully. You may not take it fully, but you will get something out of each speech. Wow, I got some idea. I started Googling. So many speeches, every year there is a Where will I start? I go. I start from my neighboring country, Sri Lanka. 2014 Chami. Dhananjay, how many of you remember? Yes. I had it many times. I could not follow. He talks about his family. He was inside the jail. He is fighting with his mother. Father comes and comforts him. This problem, that problem. I don't get anything. <laughs> but repeatedly when I was listening, I got stuck. One area. Son, I can see something in you, but I don't know what it is. Ah, I got an idea. I have something in me, but I don't think I don't know what it is. As Vivek said, I also have the bad practice of asking everything from my boss. I went to my wife. On that day, after dinner, in the bedroom, I went and stood in front of my wife and asked, Daddy! Look at me. Do you see something in me which you do not know? What? Hey man, today is not 
the day. There is nothing new in it. Oh, you have taken wrong. This is not what I thought of. I immediately jumped out of my room and I went to my kids. Otherwise, the scene would have been wrong. I went to my kids and asked. Kids, because all the kids are in the audience, I thought, they can give me an answer. Kids, look at me. Look at that. Do you see anything in me? Something which you do not know? The elder one said, Dad, did you watch Sanjay Street today? Oh, again I don't. <laughs> then the little one said, Dad, he's a big guy. He fooled all the judges. That is how we became the champion. There's nothing, no, there's nothing like that. Everyone knows what they have. Oh, I'm the same. I thought I'll go for somebody else. Again, I started Googling. This time I thought, I'll take somebody from my country. Mr. Vasudeva. Manoj Vasudeva, if you remember. He's from my state, India, and Kerala. I started listening to his speech. And always, I don't I get anything. He talks about his family problems. But I'm going to a good step. He says, when more, pull less. When more, pull less. Wow. I need to make more to become a champion, right? Very simple. Again, I went to my boss. Darling, I have a new theory for the family. When more, pull less. When more, pull less. Hey man, don't come to me with this when more, pull less. We are doing all this years the same thing. Oh, come on. Again, mistake. I went to my kids. I asked, kids, what do you think of this bend more for boldness? Again, the other one said, Dad, if you start bending more in front of mom, you will bend every day. Don't bend like that. Wow, I got it. But I didn't want to do it. I want to become the champion. I waited for the last one, last years. Do you remember Ramana Smith? The beautiful lady who came to Abu Dhabi, who lifted the World Champion Trophy last year. Hell yeah, I love her. Beautiful girl. But she is the biggest liar. Do you agree or not? What is the catch of her speech? What is the catch of her speech? I am still standing. What? Out of seven minutes, six minutes he was jumping in the stage. Right? Like she was. In a boxing ring, she always turned it like this, like, and she says, I'm still standing. She was contradicting from what she said. And the audience all clapped. Judges made her the winner. Right or not? Then they said, There is something in you. Everyone clapped. He became the winner. Manoj said, Ben more. Husbands, how many of you are ready to bend more? He will bend every day. So, what is the shortage? My mentor rightly told me. Follow the paths of the winners. Be the biggest liar. Be a cost customer now. But being the biggest liar. You will be the winner. Oh, gee. I'm in fact, please. Our next contestant, Postmaster Puran Rai.
Cross Masters were right, which is which title? Butter Fingers. Butter Fingers, Cross Masters were right, all the best. Conscious Chair, respected judges, fellow Cross Masters, good evening again. Good evening. Good evening. I have a strange habit. Whenever I want to relax, I like to laugh at myself. There are many reasons why I laugh at myself. Because there are many incidents where I have made a fool of myself because of my clumsy hands. How many of you have heard the term butterfingers? Well, butterfingers basically means your hands as though it's coated with butter. Whatever you try to hold, a grip slips and grips. But the actual meaning of it is clumsy. And I've known to be clumsy from a very young age. But there are many incidents which has happened in the past which I would like to share with you, which I cannot forget. And each time that I want to relax, I think about it and laugh at myself. Many years ago, for me it's many years ago, because now I'm pretty old, so everything is about the past. Many years ago, a group of friends, we wanted to celebrate the New Year's. Now, I come from a very cold place where most of the restaurants close early. So we had no choice but to buy a bottle of drink, carry it with us, go around town, and towards midnight sit in the park and celebrate. But of all the people, my friend chose me to carry the bottle. So I was carrying the bottle inside my coat like this, and we went round and round. Towards midnight, it was time to celebrate, 5 to 12. So we all sat down and one of my friends came over to me and said, pass me the bottle. So I said, okay, took the bottle with my left hand like this. While I was passing it to him, some technical problem with my hand, I guess. The bottle slipped from my hand and came crashing on the floor, exploding on the floor, announcing the arrival of the new year. <laughs> For a minute or so, there was complete silence because our friends didn't realize what was happening in the dark. Once they realized I was looking on the floor, all of them started exploding. This real firework started. Each one of them red hot, angry, cursing me. I tell you, the fireworks was more impressive than the one I saw in Burj Khalifa. <laughs> I'll never forget that evening because of that incident, because of my hand. Some more incidents. Years later, same group of friends, we went on a tour of India. And on our last leg, we wanted to stop by the city of Calcutta, which is famous for its nightlife. So this was the last leg. We had just enough budget to go out and have a nice evening. So before going out, we just went through how much we had. We saw that we had enough for a couple of drinks and good food. So we went into a nice pub and straight to the bar. Still in college, we're quite excited. One flat was here. I was sitting on the extreme left. My friends were on, on my right side. On my left was some stranger. So as was customary when the drinks came, we wanted to toast to our wonderful trip. So as we raised a glass to toast, somehow again some technical problem, my left elbow managed to encroach on my neighbor's territory. <coughs> Just top of his drinks, the glass along with the drink. And I saw that, I looked at him, my friends looked at me, for a moment we were just caught like this, frozen. So I said, I'm sorry. But the way he looked at me, he was quite drunk. He looked like, if I don't buy him that drink, there was going to be trouble. So I politely said, sorry, what can I offer you? Strangely enough, I think he wanted to take advantage of the situation. He asked for a very expensive drink. <laughs> so in the process of buying that drink, our budget was slashed to more than half. Again, my friends were all angry with me, cursing me. And the earful I got on the way back to the hotel room, I can still hear it because of my hands. One day, I come back from office and I wanted to have tea. So I asked my wife to make tea for me. She was busy doing something, she said, why didn't you make it yourself? I said, okay, I'll try my luck. So I put the water to boil and I reached for the tea container which was on the shelf. I don't know why these ladies like to keep containers all high on the shelf. Slowly I managed to take the container, open the lid, put the tea leaves on the boiling water, put the lid back. So far so good. Then while I was putting it on the shelf, she said something. 
And I think that made me lose my concentration. I thought I left the container on the shelf, but as I turned around, the container fell on the floor, tea spread all over the floor. My wife jumped from her chair and said, Oh, you, you know, clumsy hand. I think I never can trust you with anything. So, whenever I go out with her, she's quite used to it. Whenever I go out for dinner or for any uh, lunch, in our friend's house or any restaurant, the first thing she'll do is she'll put away all the spillable items, all the breakable items at a safe distance from me. And whenever I want to go for a second helping, she makes sure that. I will not do it. She'll get up and quickly do it for me. So that I don't cause any more damage. But I think my reputation is traveling quite far. Because recently I was in a venerable president's house for a meeting. And I was just on the table. Next to me were a couple of cups and glasses. While I was looking at it, he was quietly moving it away from me. <laughs> so, so I said, what's going on? He said, I know you. <laughs> from your species, I think you're going to damage or break one of my, my cups here or something. So I think my, my reputation is carried very far also. So, but whenever my wife is around, I keep this warm water tea. <coughs> Some time ago, me and my colleagues were having tea in one of the restaurants. Directly opposite me was my PRO and his wife, Sportless Kandula. I was having tea, something again, some technical problem with my hands, a cup of tea in my hand broke. All the contents spill over his dress. He jumped from his chair like this. He visibly annoyed. I said, I'm sorry. He said, no, it's okay, but I knew he was annoyed. And nowadays, whenever we're sitting and having any lunch or tea or any, any, anything outside, you know, I always find out that he's not sitting directly outside. <laughs> and if he's sitting somewhere nearby, he's always, his hands, I will be darting at my hand, going to be So I've been born with this consciousness from very beginning. Because even when I was a kid, I still remember, whenever I used to get up from a sofa or from a bed, I would always leave the sheet crumpled in the shape of a hurricane. So it looks like I will be going on relaxing, laughing at myself because of my hurricanes. Our fifth and last contestant for today, Postmaster Hafsprit Singh. <laughs> Postmaster Hafsprit Singh is a speech title, Accidental Engineer. Accidental, Accidental Engineer? Accidental Engineer. Accidental Engineer? Yes. Postmaster Hafsprit Singh, for the How many of you are engineers in this room? Please raise your hands. Quite a good number. They say that engineering makes the world. Do you agree? Yes. Do you agree? Yes. Because in our daily lives we have engineering. Like, let's say this hospital was constructed by a civil engineer. The similar way that uh, the electronics was done by some engineer and it's all. But certain areas when, when you come across the daily lives, you know, like uh, some people irrelevant of the topic and irrelevant of the subject, that engineering. Now I'll uh, tell you an example. Like the other day, we all like 
getting outside the elevator and six of us were there uh, four people like uh, around like me and uh, two others were like six feet tall and you can expect like 300 pounds each and uh, <coughs> we entered the elevator and uh, as we entered the elevator everybody stood and uh, the alarm went off because it was obviously you can expect it was overwhelming now the alarm went and the lift was not going now another person at the back standing he just looks at the space bad engineering <laughs> Now I didn't get at that point that what was bad engineering. The bad engineering was the extra pounds that were there or the lift was uh, giving the alarm. Another incident, like uh, there was an accident. Recently there was a car accident. And uh, what happened in, like at the accident site, people were like, uh, uh, the road was not constructed properly. Uh, it was a very bad or bad engineer. Again, the same uh, comment. And like people followed on, okay, fine. But next day in the paper, the headline was Drunken Driving is Dangerous for <laughs> Now, had it been like drunken driving is dangerous or engineering is dangerous for it? So, this, this is what people come across in the daily engineering and people take a bad aspect of things. So, Honorable Chairperson, respected judges and my fellow Toastmasters, my fate was not planned, it was uncertain and it was, it started all when I completed my 12th standard and uh, I got my report card and my dad was in the morning time, he was reading the newspaper and uh, I went with to him with the report card and I showed him. So he was sitting on his chair reading the newspaper and I like I came to him that I got my result. Now the first thing he asked me is like have you passed? Mm -hmm. I was like I just gave him the report card. At the moment I give him the report card now normally when uh, in a Punjabi family whenever a person is reading newspaper he reads it like this <laughs> because that is the trend and then immediately like he saw my report card <laughs> now two things happened on that day I tell you what first thing is uh, I lost my left tooth Second thing was, my mom, she started watching news channels and stopped watching serials. Now, I don't know what uh, came to her mind. And then after 12th, like uh, you get into engineering entrance exams and you come out with you, uh, every entrance exam, you get a rank card. Like, you're supposed to get a rank to better qualify. Now, the moment had come and I got my rank card for the engineering entrance exam. And when I got my engineering entrance rank card, uh, you won't imagine like my rank was so good, it was really like amazing. Like if I had uh, put it on social media today, and I would have like uh, like how people search for uh, the Sundar Pichai's salary. What is the salary of Sundar Pichai? It would have been rank of Harshpreet Singh. It was so good, and. Uh, Again the same thing, my dad was reading the newspaper and morning I went to him and I showed him the report card and the same day two things happened again. Now this time my right tooth had gone and the second thing what happened is my mom stopped cooking dal and started cooking okra because someone told her by eating okra your mind sharpens. So this is what it happened and like then I thought that I would have when my dad told like my mom told like why don't you send him into the commerce stream and let him off there. But they say that this is a very famous saying that the best part about the future is it comes every day. 
okay at every one day it comes at a time and that day was the day when my uncle came to my house and you know like everybody everybody has a mentor in the house who always don't doesn't like not bother what is going on in his house but he would like to give some good suggestion he, you better put your son into engineering so he flushed my dad's mind and he told put your son into engineering and then it all went and i joined engineering on the first day of my lecture what happened is when we entered we have a, a inauguration ceremony going on and when we went there and the first thing that was told that engineering is the most toughest field that a person is doing and i was at that point of thinking that how come my parents have had so much faith in me i mean like when i broke two, two of my teeth so left and right tooth and then again they had a faith of me doing engineering so this all went by and like i joined engineering now engineering you know is like uh, i would term it like uh, when i completed my fourth year i term it like a bottle of whiskey okay now how you term it is when you start your first year it's your third year when you start you know like you are in control when you have your third year and then when you go to second year you are in a 60 year and when you go to third year you do your half bottle and when you do your fourth year it's like full bottle you are on top of burj khalifa you don't know what you are going to do next so this is what i want to say that being an engineering student has been a very it's a very tough journey and i respect all engineers over here Five minutes time for the latest book for that time. Mm -hmm.
in the event of technical failure of the signal, a speaker is allowed 30 seconds extra overtime before being disqualified. Prior to announcing the results, the chief judge will announce time disqualifications if any, but will not name the contestants involved. Protest will be limited to judges and contestants. Any protest will be lodged with the chief judge or contest chair prior to the announcement of the winner and alternates. All decisions of the judges are final. The chief judge for this contest is Postmaster Swaminathan. I welcome chief judge and the panel of judges. Carry counters and surgeon the task. What players please stand up while your names are called up. Audience, please hold your applause till I announce the names. Timers, Postmaster Mohammad Yunus, Postmaster Sulfika, Tally counters, Postmaster Vimitesh, Gary and Sharmila Swaminathan.
Timer, ready? Yes. Ready count us. Judges, ready? Is the chief judge ready? I am always ready. Go ahead. Is the audience ready? Yes. Let me call up on stage the first contestant, Postmaster Vivekai. Gold. This is the winning gold in my life. I never look at the obstacles. Always positive. That is why I am here in this platform today. For the chair, fellow members, hospital, and of judges, guests. As the conductor at all. We have to focus on our goals. Write the goals. Put a target that. This is the only one measurement to achieve our goals. But many times I failed because it took a lot of time to come to me. But I already achieved my goals. But it's not one goal. Many goals we have to complete before we complete our life. So, I am always support the comments. What is our ultimate aim, not our seconds. How do you? The key to success is to focus on goals, not on obstacles. Right. What we focus on that is glittering in our mind, and that is where we are aimed at, where, where we are led into. So, if we focus on our goals, 
we remind us always our goals and we are attracted to that. If we are focusing on the obstacles, the, it is gone. What we see in our mind are obstacles only. It is not leading us, it is not giving any idea about our aims. So what we have to do always is focusing, bringing, visualizing about our goals, being targets and doing action plan, work on plans, work on targets, on work on goals always. Whenever it comes to your mind, this obstacles. You don't allow it to come to your mind. Focus. Focus on goals only. Gentis and fellow members. As for Robin Sharma, the success is effort, time, and commitment. If you put all this together, there's a success. If you withdraw something, no success. Let's take an example. If you look at Andrea Garcia, the tennis champion, the best I had in my opinion. He was forced to attend 5,000 bowls a day by his father to become a champion. 5,000 bowls a day. If you read his articles. He was forced to do that by his father and he became the champion. Look at cricket. Tendulkar and Kumble started together. Sorry, Gandhi. Kumble succeeds. Kumble did not succeed. Only Tendulkar could succeed. It's not the obstacles. The target, the target where you want to go. The commitment. And the time you spend on it. You take a 